What about turning the Republican Party more libertarian? And, uh, you know, this is something that uh, my colleague Matt Welch and uh, my colleague Catherine Mangu Ward, people at Reason, have we've written a lot about. It. And it seemed even a few years ago on the, the, the Tea Party wave and whatnot, the people who were coming into the Republican Party were about limiting spending, balancing the budget, getting out of a lot of social issues as a focus of national government. Can anything be done to make the Republican Party more libertarian? Yeah, I, I, again, I think so, but you can I can imagine that. such a situation. <laughs> now we're it's, deep into like a Rick and Morty multiverse yeah, scenario, so like, right? Where it's like... <laughs> in an alternative universe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can imagine such a situation, but it's hard to sort of perceive, like, it, just like it was hard to perceive the whole Trump thing, yeah. like that it was going to change the way the Republican Party views itself and change a lot of... Uh, a lot of people's positions. Um, I, I don't know, I think it's possible, mm -hmm. but again, if you could change the Speaker of the House and have a Libertarian Speaker of the House, an independent-minded Speaker of the House, uh, you'd have a bigger chance of shifting the party. So is Paul than, Ryan like a bully? Uh, the, uh, I mean, he... Uh... <laughs> So you're trying to get me in as much trouble as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like seventh grade it's all like, over again. You know? You're talking about arbitrary authority. You know? it's like, I think did he, he dunk on you or something? It's like, he has, he's never yeah. dunked on me. But you, but were, you were also I, very much, and I mean, this was a real uh, testament, I think, to your, to your character and your principles. John Boehner really disliked you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is, you know. But, so... But in, in many respects, Boehner was the better speaker. Hmm. And this is, uh, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, uh, my friend- Certainly Wal he looked better. My friend Walter Jones said he might write an apology letter to Boehner <laughs> uh, for, for trying to oust him. <laughs> but, like, th the thing about Boehner was he didn't like you, but he was open about it. Hmm. Like, he, <laughs> and, and, and I appreciated that. I could appreciate that. I didn't think he did a good job as speaker, but I at least respected that, like, if I wanted an amendment, uh, even an example that actually happened, without telling you the specific words Boehner used, because um, <laughs> they're, they're not, yeah. not safe for work. Yeah. But, but, so I, I wanted an amendment on a bill, and, and he was getting a lot of pressure to put this amendment on the floor. So he, he called me into the back of the House chamber to meet with him. So we're just sitting there like in the house chamber and um, it's mostly empty and it's just two of us in the back row. And he pulls out my, he pulls out a sheet of paper and I'm like, what's he got on this piece of paper? Like what's, <laughs> what's he going to read to me? And, and it's like a whole bunch of, I see a whole bunch of like small paragraphs and I'm like, what is this thing? And he goes, I see you've been posting a lot on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> And he just starts ripping into me, swearing, calling me the worst names he can think of. And um, I won't tell you what he said, uh, because it was pretty extreme. But I even said to him, Mr. Speaker, I don't think you mean that about some of the things he said. I like, <laughs> like it, because it was really harsh stuff. And then... And then he repeated it again <laughs> with, with a few extra colorful yeah. adjectives. Yeah. So, so, so he was pretty firm on his view of me. <laughs> but then he said, I'm going to give you your damn amendment. Yeah. Wow. And so he let me have the amendment vote. Yeah. And I could respect that. I walked away thinking, well, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. Like, he... <laughs> now... Now, with, with Paul Ryan, there is no chance of that. He's not going to swear at me. He's not even going to consider me. He's not going to think about me. Like, I'm not, like, there's no, there's no sense in which he'll even acknowledge that I exist. Yeah. So, it is a totally different dynamic, and it's worse in most respects, because I would rather have the guy swearing at me and letting me have a vote yeah. than not, not considering me at all. And um, uh, under this current speakership, we've had the fewest 
open amendments of any speakership. We've had zero. We've had zero open rules. So we haven't been able to offer amendments on bills on the House floor. We can't go to the House floor and offer our amendment on the floor. Everything has to be pre-approved by the Speaker. Every single amendment, pre-approved. Hmm. And uh, under Boehner, you had many opportunities where you could go to the floor and you could just walk up and leadership could not stop you because it was an open process and you could offer an amendment and as long as it was germane to the bill, you got to vote on it. And th this was true on basically all appropriations bills. Now we don't even do appropriations, really. They just come up with some omnibus bill, they spring it on us in the last second, and they say this is the bill, or they do a CR. And a we continuing just continuing resolution. Yeah, continuing resolution. Yeah. So we don't have these opportunities anymore to debate amendments that we want to offer that aren't pre-approved by the leadership team. Mm -hmm.